Sign up today. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon and welcome to TFNN. Uh, today is uh, May the 4th. It is the uh, magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. Let those fingers do the walking. You can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question, of course, in our tiger's den. Well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on magical, magnificent, marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Less Show. Right now, we got uh, the uh, most of the indices in the red. The Dow is off about 200 points. S&P is down 12. The Nasdaq is a strong dog out here, up 25 points. She's trading out at 87.43. That's about a quarter of a percent to the upside. The Russell off 15 points, a little over 1%. That's the trannies that are having the most difficult time. They're trading out at 79.08, down nearly 3%. Spot volatility trading out at 37.72. That is still below the 50-day exponential moving average. Gold's up 12 bucks. Silver's down 8 pennies. Lights Week Crude is up 44 cents. Natural gas is having a nice day, up nearly 10 cents out here. And Treasury bonds up 9.30 seconds. Lead the charge to the upside. It's Tesla, followed by Shopify. That's 32 and 28 dollars, respectively. The auto zone is in the green zone, up 26 bucks. Service now up 14. Regenerant Pharmaceuticals up about 13. To the downside, it's Booking Holdings. That's off 27. Transdigim Group down about 18. BlackRock 7. Google off 7 as well. So plenty to look at, but we have a number of requests out here. First thing, let's just go take a look at the markets. Let's just get our bearings on what's going on as we speak at 109 in the afternoon. So let's take a look at what do we know. We well, began, I uh, took a look at the 1 p.m. update. Let's just come back to the S&P 500. Uh, the S&P 500, we'll go, we'll go through several of the indices just so you can see what is transpiring as we speak right now, as well as what levels to be watching come the end of the day. And inside the S&P 500, the area you're going to want to watch is about 2808. The S&P closes below that combined with the spot volatility is closing above the 50-day exponential moving average, what the S&P will do is it will really confirm its Gartley cell pattern out here. So here we can see the Gartley cell pattern. You've got an A to B equals CD to the upside. This was confirmed back on Thursday. We had a nice little bear sash candle follow through on Friday, a gap to the downside. And now what's taking place today is a test of Stevie's green line. And because that's green, and what we did, you and I, we took a look at this a few days ago, well, probably on Friday. I can't say a few days ago, Thursday, Friday, we would have noticed that Stevie's line had changed colors. And when it changes colors, it tells us of an impending test of price and that level. Now, this went from red to green. And that's really important. What's really important is the test, believe it or not, because if there's a test and rejection, we already had the test. We've already seen the rejection, but this is a daily time frame chart. So 110 doesn't mean a heck of a lot of beans out there. You you know what I was going to say. Uh, it really matters where does price close. If this were the close right now, we have competing patterns. 
We have a bearish pattern, that's the Gartley sell, and we have a bullish pattern, which is that support is held. And it's really all about support. Now, what I'm going to do here is we're going to change from the S&P 500 quickly. And because so here's what we know right now, as of 111 in the afternoon, the S&P 500 has held a absolute key level of support. And that is Stevie's green line. Can sellers break the backs of support? That is the question that you and I are trying to answer. We already have one answer, at least as of 111. The answer there is no, they have not been able to do that, the sellers. Now, does that take away from my overall larger, bigger picture, bearish? Uh, no, it doesn't. We're taking a look at what are the equities or what are the indices doing as we speak right now so that I can give you the proper information so that you can prepare, understand, anticipate, and so forth. Now, Another level of support that you and I can look at, key level of support out here, would be the bottom of those profiles. Now, the profile levels, both the top, the bottom, and the center, tell us a lot about what price is doing with inside that range. The range would be the top and the bottom of its profile. So let me just expand the S&P 500, or the ES Mini is what I should say. And out here, we take a look at the uh, profiles. If you look at the bottom of the profile, that's 276680. Well, the S&P can't trade to that level, so really it would be 2766.75. Now, the low overnight was 27.71. So it was four points, four and a half points, whatever, um, above hitting the bottom. We use these as guidelines. It doesn't have to hit it to the tick. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't matter. What you need to know is that support here is held. So even though we've got sell patterns, both on the ES Mini with regard to its Gartley sell, both in the S&P 500, we also have two levels of support that have held. Now, the profile that you and I are looking at inside the S&P 5, the Yes Mini out here, let me go ahead and turn off price just so you can clearly see it. And you're going to be looking at the blue bars on the very right-hand side just as I turn the price levels off. What you're going to notice is that this is a bullish structured profile. It's bullish in structure because the center line at 2816 is closer in proximity to the bottom at 2766 versus the top at 2890. Now, the key here is going to be the 2816 level. So what we know is that the uh, sellers or the bears have not been able to bust the backs of buyers out here. But what buyers haven't been able to do, let's turn price on, is get price above the center of that profile. The center of that profile is where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value out here. If buyers are going to be able to push price up to at least the top of the profile level. That's a 2890. You need to see a close above 2816. Now, 2817 is not going to blow my skirt up, nor should it blow yours up either. But if you do see a decent close, let's call it 28, I don't know, 2822. Room 222, yeah, let's go with that out there. Then that's going to suggest you should anticipate a move to the 2890. Now, it's not going to be easy to do for the buyers out here. Let's take a quick peek at that. And so, therefore, if they can really turn the tide, what tide? Steve, oh, you just told me that two levels of support held. I did. What I haven't told you is that, or what I did tell you, I just haven't gotten to it yet, is it's still going to be a struggle for those buyers. And why? Because as we speak right now, and this just took place within the last uh, hour or so, we've seen a bearish crossover in market breadth. So as we speak right now, there's only 95 instruments in the S&P 500 trading above the top of their profile. And there's 129 trading below the bottom of their profile. This is why price has not been able to get itself, the ES Mini, above the center of that profile out there. We're going to a break. We'll come back. We'll field some questions and uh, keep looking at the uh, patterns in the markets. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading 
trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other tigers and tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow is off 250, S&P down uh, 20. A number of questions that have come in. So let's get to those. And uh, if we've got time, we'll go back to the uh, general markets. The first question coming in here from uh, Craig E. And Craig writes and he says, uh, sugarcane. C-A-N-E is the uh, ticker symbol. So let's go uh, punch this up on our screen out here. C-A-N-E. It's uh, one of the ETFs. I believe that's, uh, yeah, that's the uh, Tecrium, if that's how you pronounce it properly, ETF for sugar out here. So Craig says, uh, presently long. Next two to three week horizon, uh, would you ID support to add to a position ultimately resistance for unwinding? So here's the deal. Here is your cane ETF out here. But the problem here, Craig, is I, I, I wouldn't use this chart or this set of charts out here to be making my decisions. And the reason that I wouldn't is because I would need to understand what are the futures contracts that are contained inside of uh, 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 ticker symbol C A N E, and what uh, if it's more than one futures contract? Um, you know what are those percentages? And then you really, to, in order to truly understand Kane out here, you have to ignore this chart and you have to look at what's going on inside those futures charts. But I will give you the information that you needed, even though I'm sharing with you it's absolutely useless. But I still want to give it to you. The top of the profile on a daily basis is 555. The bottom is 527. The center is 541. So it's trading with inside its profile. I don't know if that means anything, quite frankly. I know what it means, you know, on an individual stock. But but with regard to, and this is certainly an individual ETF. But again, we've got to get back to, and I'll, I'll take a quick peek and see what, in fact, I've actually, uh, I, I pulled it up here uh, during, the, uh, during the break. 
And so uh, let me just, uh, I'll go to it in a moment. On a weekly level, because you were talking maybe two to three weeks, the bottom of its profile is 543. The center is 566, so it's a bearish profile. This says trading below. The bottom of that profile is not good. Not good to be long, intermediate term, as as you're uh, suggesting here. The top of that profile would be 612. So here's what, uh, let me uh, pull this back up. And let me come back over here to Kane. And, oops, shoot. And what I can share with you, and you may already know this, Craig, so you probably do. But for the other folks that are listening and are thinking, hey, maybe I'll take uh, Craig's position, here's what is inside as of May 1st. So this is as of the close on Friday inside of Kane. Uh, there's about 2.6 million worth of uh, October futures contracts. In fact, let me just move over to the futures contracts for sugar out here. So here are the forward futures contracts. So you've got July 2020, you've got October, you've got March, you've got May, July. Uh, now we're, you know, we're, and I'm getting into 2021 out here. You can see 2022. So you can see what uh, sugar is selling for, for delivery for each of those uh, monthly contracts. So uh, right now, cane is split up almost Oh, well, like you have 2.6 million in October contracts, you've got 2.3 million in March contracts, and you have 2.6 million in, and I'm talking March 2021, and March of 2022. So that is what it is that you've got to be able to manage, Craig, in order to be able to have any kind of visibility as to what's really going on inside of uh, Kane out there. And I can't do that, unfortunately. I would, it would take me the entire show to really do this properly out there. So that's what you would need to do. I hope you have access to those futures contracts. I would say like this, if you don't, then get out. Because you've got to be able to understand what's going on in the underlying instruments out here. And if I take a look at, well, it doesn't even make sense to look at the July contract. That is the actively traded contract out here. And you might have thought that that was the case. Instead, we've got to go take a look at October 2020 because that's the one that's in here. And right now, price is pulling back into a, a trend line. The top of that profile out there is 1053. And if you see the October sugar futures contract get below 2053, pretty good chance that's going to run, uh, run down to the 1002 area. So, Craig, I hope that helps you out with regard to Kane. Uh, if you weren't aware of the different futures contracts that were inside there, then I know that that was a big help out there. So um, let's go to our next question. The next question coming in from uh, Ian, uh, Ian Miller. No, just kidding, it's not Ian Miller out there. Uh, that uh, just take me back to my uh, good old, uh, 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 what is it, the uh, Greek wedding, what's the name of that movie out there? My, my big fat Greek wedding. But uh, DHT, now let's just stay on track here, Steve-O. Ian wants to take a look. He's got a position in DHT in at about 675. It's trading out at 729. And Ian is asking, uh, it's coming out with earnings tomorrow. Do you have a target on a daily basis and a good location for a stop? So great location for a stop. In this case here is always going to be, or I'd say, is going to be to the extent that you want to stay in this for a longer period of time out here. Your, your stop should always be some, um, some uh, expansion of its average true range. Now, I like to use the last two weeks worth of trading, and the average true range for the last 10 days is 63 cents. Yeah, 63. So your stop should be 63 times. I like to use a Fibonacci expansion. That would be 1.272 or 1.618 out there and then your stop would be you know somewhere between so, so that would be that would be your stop levels i'm, I'm not going to do the calculations you've got i've given you the numbers you can do the calculations yourself now here's the problem that you have being long dht holdings at least from a daily standpoint and earnings coming out tomorrow and that was really back on uh, looks like maybe tuesday of last week april 29th you had a wide-ranging bar with accelerating volume to a certain extent it was accelerating volume crashing below a bullish structure daily profile so from a daily Daily message, it's telling you, hey, I may have a change in trend here, or at least I want to trade lower. And we're going to go try to figure that out out here. Now, trade lower to where? If we just take a look at where's the next support level inside the profiles out here, we'd have to go to the weekly. And on the weekly, it says pulling down to 629. You're in a 675. You, you wouldn't like that out there, right? So at least I wouldn't think that you would uh, like that or appreciate it. But that is what the TAS market profiles are communicating to you and I. And what we also know is that on a monthly basis, price was unable to bust out the highs last month. That was at 808. If you can't bust them out, 
Maybe you try to bust them down. So all of that out here is painting is painting a picture, Ian, that price wants to move lower. Now, let's go take a look at the daily time frame out here. Again, this is DHT. We can see that this formed a TD9 count top out here. And now it's going to be, it looks like, perhaps in bar number seven of a TD9 count to the downside. We don't know whether that's going to form the TD9 count that is because it's only day seven and uh, you need to see that you've got at least two more days. So the earliest that we'd really know would be Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday out here. But price could, it says it's coming out with earnings. If you're asking me where support is at, or a DHT on a daily basis would find support, it would be all the way down at $5.51. There's nothing bullish about the chart pattern that you and I are looking at on a daily basis. Excuse me, got a piece of dust. <coughs> Nothing like a, a breathing in a little air and then getting a little dust ball or something. In any event out here, uh, now, look, Ian, I can't control what the markets are going to do next. But what you and I can do is we can take a look at what the markets are communicating, the message of the markets out here. That's very clear to us and understand where is support and resistance. By the way, resistance right now is Stevie's green line at 773. On a weekly basis out here, what do we see? I don't see much. I don't. I see support at about 693 out here. But um, you, uh, I'd be careful. I, w I would be careful at this stage inside of DHT. If you got a nice profit, maybe it makes sense to go ahead and bag that before earnings. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Leash Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Leash Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow down 220, S&P off 16, NASDAQ up uh, 16 points. Let's go to our next question. This one coming in from Hector and Patty, the fuel injectors out there. Hector goes on to say, hey, uh, happy marvelous uh, Monday. Uh, thank you. I realize that the uh, semiconductor index is in a Gartley cell pattern. However, if uh, fund buying does materialize for a few days, where can we see the socks completely topping and petering out by Thursday, Friday of this week? So great question. Let's go take a look at the semiconductor index. Let's go take a look at first the Gartley cell pattern that um, that uh, Hector has identified. Now, you've got really two topping signals here inside of the semiconductors. Number one, you've got the wave number seven. That's letter G. So uh, those of you that are familiar with the Chapman wave, I, I primarily focus on wave number seven, letter G. That's where you can see a change in trend. Now, at the same time that that was happening, the very next trading session, what we saw was a bear sash candle. And that confirmed that Gartley cell pattern. That was on Thursday. And then on Friday, we saw a gap to the downside. Now, in this case here, unlike what we just looked at earlier in the opening segment inside the S&P 500, you will see that its oscillator and change line changed from red to green. But on Friday, price gap down below that hectare, and it closed below that level. So that was the area that should have acted as support. Will old support become new resistance? I don't know. But if you ask me where is the key level of resistance on the move higher, I would say it would at this stage here have to be Stevie's green line. At 1674, that's about 40 points different from where it's trading right now. It could uh, do that in a uh, heartbeat out here. Uh, right now with the semiconductor index looks like it's communicating to you uh, is that price wants to trade down to its breakout level and that is 1508.74 uh, that is in the semiconductor index so the potential bounce should we see one inside the semi 1674 would be the level that I would be looking at uh, first other than that it would be somewhere inside the gap either the high of Friday or the low of Thursday that would be your next areas out there so uh, Patty and Hector, thanks for the uh, question, and uh, you guys have a uh, marvelous, a magical, a magnificent Monday. Let's go to our next question out here, this one coming in from uh, Bill, and uh, Bill wants to take a look at ticker symbol KR. That is Kroger out here, so he wants to go to the grocery store. I say go in without a mask and gloves. I say cough and breathe everywhere out there. Yeah, that's what we should do. Let's get everybody to take their masks off, for goodness sakes, out here. All right, enough of that out there. But let's go take a look at uh, what Bill is looking for, which is um, your long Kroger. What would be the target uh, inside of uh, Kroger. So here's what we know about Kroger right now as we take a look at how it's trading in relationship to its profiles. You're with the inside the daily profiles out there. So you've got resistance at 3263. That happened to be where price found resistance today. Now it's a slightly bearish structured profile. That center line a little bit closer to the top than it is to the bottom out here. But right now Kroger's just trading inside a consolidation area. 3263 at the high, 3080 at the uh, low out here. If price can break above 32 63, not break, but close above 3263. Then you're looking at the next resistance area as 3385. That's what we see when we take a look at Kroger. Now, let's bring over Stevie's other charts. On the monthly basis, price is above resistance there, so nothing for us to hang our hat on. Now, when this did form its high, Kroger, it happened to also be on wave number seven. That was letter G. That was on March the 20th. Since then, price just simply moves sideways. It's in between. There's nothing else here on the daily time frame other than a, a move below 2787 would get you to 2706. Oh, that's the monthly time frame. My apology. That's a monthly time frame that we're looking at out here. What we can see is that last week and this week, prices pulled back, tested the weekly Stevie Green line at 3189. So that still is bullish, although resistance at that 3385. Let me switch back to the daily time frame, see what we have over here pattern wise. What do we have to hang our hats on? You know, when price pulled back, here's a beautiful thing. As Kroger was pulling back, not that uh, this is what Bill was asking about, but look at this. When price pulled back, back on March 26, right back to that breakout level of 2736. You have to love, you don't have to, I love, and you should love them too, these objective levels of support and resistance out there. They're just simply they're a phenomenal tool. You should learn how to use it. 
um, you know, sign up for Mastering Probability. There's a workshop on here. It gives you all the details. Uh, it's in the archive section, and, and, and you will be happy. You will be happy. I don't have any additional information that I can see in looking at the daily time frame chart out here. You're, you're long. I don't know where you're long from. Um, but you now know at least where the resistance levels are. See if I've got anything else. I put up the monthly time frame chart. You know, monthly looks pretty good. Uh, in that price is above 3040, and that was its breakdown area. And so you had to close above that last week, suggesting that price should continue to move higher. But you've got to deal with the resistance levels by that daily and that weekly time frame. So, Mr. No, this is not Mr. Bill. No, we've got a Mr. Bill in the den. Uh, this is from Bill, and uh, that is uh, Kroger. Our next question coming in from uh, Alex, and Alex writes in. Hey, Alex, how you doing? Alex writes in, and he says. Um, Hey, Steve, has Alibaba, B-A-B-A, -A, made a near-term bottom? So let's go take a look at Alibaba. Again, ticker symbol there, B-A-B-A. -A. Let's take a look at what it's doing in relation trading in relationship to, well, has it made its bottom out here? Um, so from a market profile standpoint, the answer would be no. The reason that we would say no is because on Friday, price gap down below support on a daily basis. That was 202.48 out there. You've got another day below that level, day number two, suggesting that price moves lower. So from a profile perspective, in the monthly or the weekly profile is bearish in structure and prices below the center of that box, 208.85. This is suggesting to you that its next target is 181.06. 177.78 is the top of the monthly profile. So that really is the range of where price is very likely headed to. Now, let's pull over the other chart, uh, my other chart tools out here for Alibaba, see what we see out here. And on this chart, chart, what we're seeing is price today is trading below its breakout level. So this formed a TD9 count top. It did it on the bar following bar number nine that was on April the 21st out there. That set up this breakout level of 192.70. And today with price trading below that, again, if it holds 192.70 at the end of the day, different picture out here. But right now that's not the case. And this is suggesting to us that price wants to move lower as well. Let me put up, that was a daily time frame. Let me put up the uh, weekly time frame. Let me populate this out here, see what we see. Nothing new here. 168.12 if price doesn't hold the 181.06 area. And on the monthly time frame, yeah, I don't have anything else. So, But to answer your question, has this made a near-term bottom? Stevie's answer is going to have to be no. I don't see any pattern out here to suggest that. And I would just simply be watching that 181-ish type area for the next potential uh, bottoming signal. You'd want to see some type of bottoming pattern on the daily time frame to match up with that uh, weekly uh, bottom of its market profile out there. So, Alex, good to hear from you. Thanks for writing in. I hope that that uh, helps you out. So there are some more questions, but we've got about 30 seconds out here. Let's go take a look at the uh, other areas and numbers you're going to want to watch during the day. Let's take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average right now. Price is testing Stevie's green line. It's got a Gartley sell. 23,446 is the approximate number. That's that's the exact number right now. That'll change throughout the day. But still still in the Dow, you've got a nice Gartley sell pattern. But price has not been able to bust through support. Don't get caught up into the numbers. Instead, know your P's and Q's. Actually, know your S's and R's. Not your Steve Rhodes's, but your support and resistance levels. And if you know that, you'll be able to interpret the message of the markets. Right now, the Dow holding key support. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. Hey, we're making good progress here getting through the uh, questions. There's two more that are in at the moment, so let's go take a look at uh, those. This one coming in from Wayne. Wayne writes in, he says, thoughts on SHOP. So let's go pull that as Shopify, I believe. S-H-O-P is the ticker. I'm okay, we've already got that up here, so you can take a look. at it. Let me finish reading the question out here. Wayne goes on to say, um, earnings are on the uh, 7th. Potential up or down range and direction of the likely move out here. Wayne from Dallas. So Wayne, right now prices is, uh, stuck in between its daily and weekly profile. So here's what you know. You've got resistance at 650.307 and support at 589.70. Shopify is trading above its weekly and its monthly uh, profiles. So it says it's above resistance for those time frames out here. I don't see anything at this stage to suggest that it has uh, topped, at least on those time frames. But I could be wrong. We've got to go see what patterns are going on out there. So let's pull over Shopify, take a look at it, see if there's any kind of uh, clue that it's trying to provide to you and I. Let's begin by taking a look at the daily time frame out here. Let me populate this with all my tools. And uh, what do we have? What do we have? You've got a TD9 count top. But price has been unable to bust support. Now, what do I mean by bust support? How can you say that so quickly, Steve? I thought you said price was trading in between support and resistance on its daily time frame. Don't you love how I just talk to myself? Somebody's got to talk to me. Well, it, that is true. That is a true statement. It's trading between support and resistance of its market profiles. 589.70 at the bottom, 653.07 at the top. But what price did today, as an example here, Wayne, is price came down and tested Stevie's green line. So it's still bullish. With resistance up at the 653.07 level, it is most. It's got the TD9 count top. So, like many of the patterns that we're looking in the market, we've got clear topping signals. But what sellers have been unable to do thus far is bust out key levels of support. And Shopify is no different. It looks similar, similar, but not the same, but similar uh, to the uh, Dow and the S&P. And that's got a clear topping pattern out here, but has not been able to bust through support. So, I would have to say, Wayne, that's a bullish message, but it's almost more neutral. 
it's as if it's also waiting to see how is the market going to respond to earnings. It's got a top and prices down above that. And yet prices is above support as well. So I don't really see any kind of clear signal where this will trade to on a daily time frame. Now, I take that back on the monthly. There was last week was a road momentum indicator signal. It was a dark cloud cover out here as prices moving higher, doing less relative energy. But the dark cloud cover is like me telling you if you lived in Florida that it might rain, that there's a 10% chance. of. There, what's the difference between a 10% chance of rain and an 80% chance of rain in Florida? Not much, quite frankly. Really not much. Uh, even when they uh, weather forecasters uh, use their super Doppler radar out there. They're not as good as Stevie's super Doppler out here. Uh, things can get busted up pretty quickly. That's the beauty of living on a uh, peninsula like this. Um, so uh, back to the weekly time frame chart and answering your question, Wayne. Yeah, there's an indication that it wants the top, but until price is able to get through at least the level of support, first level would be 546 and change out there. Um still remains a uh, bullish from my standpoint. And on a monthly basis, I don't see any kind of a topping signal. So the daily is just neutral at this stage and maybe waiting to see how the market will respond out there. I don't have a clear signal as to which way it wants to move. It is more bullish than it is bearish. And I think we uh, covered that. Let's go to the next question that came in here. And that is coming from Eddie. Eddie says, uh, Steve, could the market hold up with the positive notion that we are reopening the country. Can you look at team and NVIDIA? Um, hey, hey, it could. It absolutely could out there, Eddie. Do I, uh, but that means in order to say that it could, uh, what the mark will have to do is defy history, defy history of the last several hundred years out there. But at least for the last 130 years out there is what the market would have to defy. I don't know if any of you got a chance to, uh, I mean, I don't know what it's like in your neck of the woods. In my neck of the woods, even though I'm in Florida and there are certain parts that are open, and I saw they had Clearwater Beach out there, we're not open down here in Palm Beach County. We're still basically locked up. So there's not a whole lot to do. There's nothing that's really open, even if you wanted to go out, so to uh, speak. And uh, so, um, you know, I, I, there was nothing better to do on Saturday night than watch four hours of uh, Warren Buffett uh, taking questions. I think it was probably about two or three hours. Actually, I found it fascinating. I absolutely found it uh, fascinating. So I don't know if you got a chance to see it. I don't know if they replayed it or not, but it was easy enough to watch on my uh, porch as I was watching the boats go by and watch uh, Warren try to answer some uh, questions, uh, many questions. And boy, he he really, uh, what I might take away from it, there's several, several takeaways. He spent the first hour or so, um, and you could see the fear. I could see the fear. I felt the fear coming from him. And he was doing everything he could, I felt, to try to not crash the market. Truly, that 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 was the that was the impression that I got from from him, and then of course his actions out there, and uh, he he he's going to take advantage of a buying opportunity, and in and he indicated to us, for how many of reasons you want to take a look at it out here, Eddie, is he didn't see a buying opportunity. That's because he that is because. Um, uh, 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 what's his other name? Charlie out there. Uh, they know they know fundamentally how markets will form bottoms, and they know that every major market bottom is formed with GDP bottoming. And if you listen to Warren, uh, he was basically saying, um, "Yeah, I don't see it. Could happen. Will happen eventually. U.S. is a great place, uh, but uh, not with my money." is in essence what he was saying, at least what I saw. And with regard to Charlie Munger out there, I think more likely than not, because Charlie at 96 doesn't have much of a filter, nor does he really need one. If somebody would ask Charlie a question, he would have given the honest answer. And that would have scared the bejesus out of probably everybody out there in the market would be crashing. So is it possible? Yeah, it'll have to defy uh, odds that are... Um, you know, so I so I'm just speaking to you and I'm answering your question here, Eddie, and I'm doing it factually from a chart pattern standpoint out there. And I think that what you and I had looked at um, a month ago, 
or six weeks ago, five, six weeks ago, when all this started unfolding out there is exactly what they also are looking at. But boy, Warren really does have a great grasp of his businesses out there and was really able to answer, you know, when they start taking a look at capital allocation. And I know for many people, those conversations could easily go over the head of uh, folks out there. But look, I'm a bean counter. Yeah, I love numbers. As my good friend uh, John has told me, he says, uh, when it comes to this uh, stock stuff, uh, he calls me a geek. Uh, but he does it in a very affectionate way out there. I love it uh, because this is this is the stuff that I do enjoy and I love. And, and, and if you're at all numbers guy, you're, you know, go listen to it. it. It was on Yahoo. They've got it's got to be a recording of it somewhere out there. And I, I really thought it was uh, fascinating all the way up to the uh, last question out there. And the questions were good. I mean, he started talking, he talked about, you know, uh, hey, once once he goes and, and whoever it is that takes over, what's going to stop uh, somebody from coming in and trying to break up uh, Berkshire Hathaway? In other words, uh, parts are maybe greater than the sum out there. And, and he had an immediate grasp of that. Now, I realize that he's also pushing his own book and his game out there, but but still very, uh, very clear, articulate answers. So, Eddie, sorry about that. When we come back from this break, I'll give you your answer on team or NVIDIA out there. I'll see which one has the uh, better patterns for you. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Be anyway. right Markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets. This is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, JDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionics, oil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN.
Welcome back, folks. Ed Dow's off 185 right now, S&P down 11. Let's go answer Eddie's question about team and then spend a minute or so taking a look at the market. So, Eddie, when I take a look at team, prices above the uh, top of its weekly profile, 156.12. It closes above that bullish breakout. Uh, you got a brand new profile that formed here in May. Prices above that. That's a bullish message. There's an A to B equals CD to the downside at a minimum that is in play out here. It didn't confirm it, meaning volume didn't exceed the swing point when it passed it on uh, March 25th which had 2.7 million shares. Nonetheless, there's an A to B equals CD to the upside. The first, uh, the one to one level is 166. The one to 1 1.2 is 177. So team is uh, really above all resistance levels out here that I can see and, and all looks pretty good there. Now back to the markets and what to be watching come the end of the trading session out here. If we take a look at market breadth, the advanced decline oscillator is basically sitting on its zero line out here. So still really in the hands of the uh, bulls. If we take a look at the spot volatility index, price is below the 50-day exponential moving average, that's at 40.80. That says uh, price is still in the hands of the bulls. We look at the S&P and the Dow already. Let's go take a look at the NDX 100. And the NDX 100, price is above Stevie's green line out here. Again, nice Gartley sell pattern. That took place on Friday with its Three River Evening Star pattern out here. But price is still above Stevie's green line. That doesn't mean that it doesn't have some problems out here. When I say problems, it's market breadth in the NDX 100, just like the S&P is on a daily basis is market breadth bearish. Uh, right now it had a, bull, a bearish crossover. Let's take a look at the top uh, holdings inside of the uh, S and, uh, of the uh, NDX. You've got Microsoft. Is there anything bullish out here? Look, you've got the Gartley cell. Price above Stevie's green line. That is bullish, not bearish out here. So kind of neutral, right, in between support and resistance. Maybe not right to you, but right for me. If we go take a look at Apple, Apple's got a Gartley cell pattern, the shooting star from Friday. Uh, but this shooting star is not having any follow through to the downside. Price above its green line out there. Again, more neutral or bullish. It is not bearish even though it has a bearish pattern. If we take a look at Amazon, Amazon's got a nice little Gartley cell, Rhodes Mint, a butterfly cell, a Rhodes Mint indicator, but price here has not busted support, and that's 22.39. Those are your top three holdings inside the NDX 100. Folks, stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next after that, Tom O'Brien, to take us on home, and I'll look forward to seeing you on Cinco de Mayo. We'll have a Corona. We will have a Corona. We'll drink one live on the air. Take care, folks.